somehow, maybe I'm just overgeneralizing my own experience, uh, that um, what young people need is not what I call the Paris Island approach to learning science, you know, that is, first you have to learn how to, uh, uh, to take apart a rifle, clean it and so on, and then how to shoot and so on. And then you can get to go the next day and eventually you will be a Marine. Well, I think we do a little bit too much of that too, you know. First, you've got to learn some math, you know, oh yeah, to go to get some physics and chemistry. And you wanted to be a biologist, okay, then you can, you're ready to go in and be a biologist. I don't believe in that approach at all. I think it should be in reverse. You know, saying, I'm working on, here's the kind of research I'm doing, the teacher says, or the, or the older mentor. Uh, I'm doing this kind of research, isn't it fascinating, and so on. You know, um, uh, why don't you think about doing this if you'd really like to get out there and get something new done yourself? Why don't you just go ahead and do it? See if you can find that, find, do this or do that. Take care of it. I think that might stimulate at least that fraction, and I don't think it'd be a very small fraction, of uh, young people who uh, would be best served by this kind of encouragement and empowerment at an early age. You, know, you might say to them, when they come back and they've written a report or something, you know, you obviously have uh, never heard of uh, the role of probability in population genetics. Here's a book, go learn it then come back and let's talk about it when you have that extra information. That's the way to teach, I think. Of course, it probably requires a lot of mentors. Right, right. Yeah. It's gonna, yeah, that's the job, that's the job I'm giving you now. <laughs> <laughs> How to turn high school teachers into mentors. Well, that's what, that's what our that's course. That's what you try to do, I know. That's what we try and do in the course we teach for yeah. teachers at La Selva, is to, yeah. is to have the teachers experience precisely the joy in discovery. Exactly. The joy in the process that you describe from your lifelong experience to give them a chance to feel that and then convey that to their students. Yeah, but don't you agree too that you just mentioned the deadliness of the no child left behind. Um, that the right teacher is a teacher that will, among other things, um, have a passion for the subject and probably a research interest of their own, you know, like they're doing a year-round survey of the diatoms of a local lake and so on. You could draw in a dozen students right away as assistants, giving them part of it and turning them loose. The best teachers do that, and we have... We I, had the, I had the impression the they do, yeah. yeah. That's why scientific natural history is... Um, needs to be cultivated and continued. Um, scientific natural history, that's something I want to see not just survive, but flourish. In other words, the first stages in discovering something new, which you really can accomplish in most parts of the world. Tardigrades. You know, wouldn't it be interesting to become a world authority on tardigrades? I know of only two in America, maybe more now, uh, but uh, what a great group to work on. The whole history of the tardigrades, what they eat, where they are, what their evolution has been, and so on. Um, so many things like that, so many groups. <laughs>